G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we've got a family tutorial to run through. Um, so we're going to be looking at how to deal with angular constraints when you're building Revit families. Um, so I just wanted to give credit to one of my subscribers who actually requested this topic. Uh, it's a great topic um, and it's one that I found quite uh, challenging when I first tried to overcome it. Um, so thanks Tomas for the request and hopefully this video helps you and others. So we've got a previous family creation series on my channel, so feel free to watch these videos as well if you're not familiar with how to build families. But if not, this can serve as an additional tutorial from there. Anyway, so we're just going to do a quick refresher. So we're dealing today with what's called constraining in Revit, so basically the locking down of elements, such as sketch lines or even data. In this case, mostly dealing with sketch lines. Um, so just a reminder that we try not to constrain to geometry, uh, instead we try to constrain to references, um, unless it's absolutely necessary. And this is so our families don't get too complicated in their constraints and come undone. Um, so we're going to be dealing today with reference planes and reference lines, which are the predominant elements in families that are used to constrain. Um, so planes are typically an infinite plane of length, whereas lines are a finite length, but they still define a plane in the, the working plane that they're drawn on. So reference planes are great for 90 degree angles. Uh, so they're really easy for families such as this sofa, where everything's at 90 degrees. However, when we get to angles, uh, reference planes aren't perfect. They do have a lot of problems. Um, for example, here we've got a, an angular reference that's away from the origin of my family. And you can see that if I move this straight reference plane, which is coincident with um, the angled reference plane, it won't drag uh, that reference plane with it. The reference plane has no horizontal constraint. So this is where we actually look to reference lines instead. So just some examples before we actually go into a demonstration of where you would want to use reference lines in order to create angular constraints. For here, for example, is an escalator that I've built and I've had to use reference lines and angular constraints in order to enable the escalator to change angles and also change height. Uh, step ladders are a great example of where you'd need this as well um, because the, the angle or the depth will pretty much drive the, the height of the family essentially. And just a really simple example from my work as well, we've got a detail item which we use for looking at steel studs in side view and sometimes we might see a base track in floor plan and we might need to miter the angle that the base track sits at when it meets another stud because not every stud meets at 90 degrees. So in this case we actually embed a angular reference on the end of each of those uh, ends of that detail family, which you can see here using a, a reference line. So today's example is one that probably does have a few videos that cover it elsewhere, but I will go into a little bit more detail and show a few more tips and tricks that I haven't seen other videos used before, um, especially when looking at dealing with nesting families at an angle as well. So today we're gonna to look at an adjustable door that can swing on any angle, um, but it's also gonna have handles that move with it as well. Um, and they'll also move as the door swings. Okay, so without further ado, um, we'll just go and open our door. Literally, we're gonna make our door open. Uh, terrible pun, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I've just started with the default single flush Autodesk door here, just to keep things really simple. And by default, uh, this family has a couple of trims, um, but it has a door in plan that is in the open position and always in the open position. And it has a 3D door that's always in the closed position. So this doesn't really work. We want to make this thing open in 3D. So what we're going to do is just get rid of our leaf. Um, we'll keep our trims, but we'll get rid of our representational lines as well. And I'll just get rid of this dimension, whatever it is. I'm not sure why it's there. Anyway, so we're going to start by drawing some reference lines. And I'll show you why in a second we need to do this. So we're just going to make a reference line and we're going to make it not a reference. I'm going to draw it here and align it to the edge of my door and then align it to my wall face. And the reason we're doing this is because reference lines have a special behavior in that if you isolate your reference line and you draw another reference line on the end of that line, this will become sort of like a lock, a locked relationship between the two. So if my door changes width, let's say we go down to 820, You'll see that it pulls my reference plane with it, um, which is great. So that's just a, an inherent behavior of reference lines. Um, and that's just, that's why we use them for angular constraints. Uh, from here, we're actually gonna go and build the, the pieces of our actual door. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set an angle parameter between our wall face and our door. We'll just change our detail scale to one to 10. And what I'm gonna do is just add a instance-based angle parameter. 
As you can see under the type, it's angle. Okay, so at the moment, if I change that angle, uh, we'll be able to redefine the swing angle of the door, but obviously we don't have the constraints available to build the door leaf. So what we need to do now is copy this, apply the thickness of the door, and we'll set a thickness parameter between these two reference lines. So we'll just set a thickness. Um, so at the moment, you may expect that if we change our angle, it does actually hold that relationship. Uh, but sometimes to be safe, just to make sure things are, I guess, suitably constrained in case another angle is lost, I do sometimes like to just set a copy of that constraint to the constraining plane that the other reference line is constrained to. It's not essential, but if someone went and rebuilt the family, you may need to actually, you know, have some reference of what the angle was. Um, note that this relationship is pretty much being set by this, this point, because we're really just saying this reference line is always 51 millimeters or the thickness of the door away from this line. And this line pivots about this point. This reference line doesn't really have a pivot point. It's all set on relationships. Um, so from there, what we'll do is we'll just isolate category on our reference lines. And I'm just gonna draw a reference line here on this point as well. I'm gonna draw it perpendicular to my door. because so essentially we're drawing the ends of our door leaves now. And I'll just draw one here. And the great thing about reference lines is you can trim them as well. And they behave a bit like 2D lines in that they'll, they'll try to move when their ends move with other lines as well. And what we're gonna do is just tell this line here that it's at 90 degrees, always. Same with this one. This way, these all stay square to each other as the door pivots. And what we'll do is we're also just gonna set a dimension from reference line to reference line. And this is essentially our door width. And you can see because my pivot point on my reference lines is here, you note that this gets pulled back towards it. Okay, so now you'll see if we change our door width, we should expect everything else to shift as well. Likewise, if I change the angle of my swing, you can see my reference lines also adjust to suit. So really all we need to do now for our 3D leaf is just draw an extrusion. And when you pick line, just make sure you pick the reference lines only. Don't um, constrain to any reference planes. Okay. And then we're just gonna go into our front elevation and we'll just use the align tool to line that up to the top of our door. There you go. And we probably want to hide this in front, back and left, right view, as well as plan, because really we're gonna, we're gonna still have a representational swing um, in floor plan. We could technically show it in floor plan. For now, let's say we will. But what I, would, what I would usually recommend doing is creating a symbolic line for the door swing instead um, so that the door leaf doesn't mask the floor finish underneath, for example. Um, and what we can do from there is just add a swing line. So we're just going to do a plan swing cut and we're just going to do a center ends arc. And what I'll do for now is I'm just going to properly constrain this. So I'm going to activate this arc's center mark. I'm going to give this arc a radius. I'm going to set the radius to the door width. And at this point, I may need to set the angle as well. So I'm just going to constrain this to the face of the wall and here as well. So at this point, you've got a few choices how you constrain this. Um, probably in this case, it may be best to actually add a panel cut line and map this to the doors reference lines as well just so that we have something that we can trim this swing line to. So I'm just tabbing through my references there to make sure I have reference lines. So I know, I know you said you can just have the 3D there, but I think it's better because now we can actually trim this to the end of the door panel. And this way, as the door opens, it should also pull the swing line with it as well. And there you go, you can see now our swing line is also moving with the door. So what we might do is actually just hide our door door leaf in floor plan. Okay, so, and the great thing about this is you can actually go to a reflex angle as well. So we can do like a one, uh, okay, maybe we're gonna have some trouble with that one. Looks like sometimes angular constraints can be quite difficult. I think in this case that the constraint that we're dealing with issues with is actually driven by this, this door leaf swing. So what I might do is just delete my swing line 
that's the reflex angle. Okay, so it's the swing line that's doing it. So we may actually constrain our swing line uh, using a, a uh, dimension instead of constraining it to a line. So if I just set that back to a reflex angle, you know that it's it's trying to follow the door leaf, which is interesting. I wonder if I just soft snap it instead by lining it up whether it might behave. Okay, it looks like it might behave this way. You can see sometimes 2D lines have a bit of a bit of a mind of their own how to behave. Um, they don't always do what you're expecting to do. Something to be mindful of in angleable families that I've found is quite common is you do usually don't want to set your angle to zero because it's hard for the family to readjust that swing sometimes. So I can see here one of my lines is already deleting itself as well. So I do need to actually build this family more carefully as well. You may need to overextend this swing line or find a way to deal with that issue. Um, another option is you can just show the door open at 90 degrees um, in plan all the time. Or you can build in a very small control that means the door can never be fully shut. I'd recommend just putting the door in open position in floor plan and in 3D your door swings. Um, but for now I won't worry about that. But uh, basically what happens is when this gets to zero, this arc becomes zero essentially. So that's a bit, a little bit dangerous. So just be mindful of that behavior. But if I, if I did just get rid of my arc line for now, so I could delete that line and I take the door to zero, the door shuts. But sometimes if you go and try to readjust the angle, sometimes that won't work. Um, I haven't found a consistent behavior as to why that happens. But sometimes you will get a warning where it's trying to remove all your dimension constraints. So I usually recommend against uh, fully closing or fully flattening an element that has an angle related to it just for that reason. Anyway, I'll just go back and add that swing back in. Okay, so what we're going to look at now is hardware. So I'm just going to load in a door handle family. And this door handle is a level based family or just a standard hosted family. Um, so you might expect that you can host things uh, in a similar way such as hardware. So what we can do, let's say we just want to take our, our reference line. I'll just make sure I've actually got the reference line itself. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to obtain a reference line in that handle and isolate category. So you might think you can take that reference line, let's say we're going to set it in by 50 millimeters and constrain this door handle to that reference line and then finally dimension to here and lock and you might think that the door should swing and the handle should move with it however that's not the case see the, the constraints are breaking so this is something i see people don't tend to cover in angleable door family tutorials so i'm going to show you a solution to this so let's keep this reference line here um, for now. But what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna make this family a face-based handle instead. So I don't usually like using face-based families. This is one sort of exception when I say it makes sense. Um, so in this case, the face will be the door leaf. So let's load this handle in instead. And what we're gonna do is place two door leaves, or two, sorry, two door handles on our leaf. So we're just gonna place on face and place on face. And I'll just turn my turn my handles around, and we'll just set them to 900 above the base level. So now, if we go to floor plan, what we can do is we can constrain them in one direction. So I can constrain them to that reference line, and because they're always staying relative to the face, this now should work. So if I change the angle, you'll see that now this is moving, and the hardware is going with it as well. So what we can do from there is just hide that in plan view. So if I just make a new project, I'll just test that door out in the project. But essentially what we've made should work now. So we'll just make a few walls and we'll just load into project and we'll just place a couple of these. So because it's an instance space parameter, we can toggle it depending on which door we're looking at. And there you go, you can see that now we've got a, a flexible family. Um, you may recall we can't set this to zero because the swing will break. Um, so that's one thing that I recommend being careful of. See there, when I go to a really small angle, it goes to the reflex angle as well. So you have to be mindful that the family can be a little bit, 
a little bit distorted. Um, so what I recommend is instead just drawing it in the open position in 3D lines. But now in 3D, we actually have doors that are operable um, because we've set up an angular constraint, essentially. So hopefully that sort of makes sense and gives you a new technique that you can apply to your content. Uh, there's lots of other scenarios you can use that technique. Um, so if, if you enjoyed what you saw today, feel free to, um, to follow and subscribe. I, I release videos usually three times a week. Um, if you have any uh, topic requests, um, such as the one that was made for this video, uh, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.